30 years ago, the nation was shocked when a man began opening fire on a Long Island railroad train. Six people were killed and 19 others were injured. An hour-long documentary airing Friday on CBS New York takes a look back at the shooting. Here's a preview. As I think anybody who has lived in Long Island knows, much easier to take mass transportation. Tuesday night was the night for me to be on that train. Just made the 533 by seconds. Yes, it was in between New York Park and Maryland Avenue. That's when the shooting started. He just started shooting everyone. I knew I was going to die. CBS News reporter Carolyn Gussoff produced the 533 legacy of the LIRR massacre. She joins us now from the station where the shooting happened. Good to be with you. Just take us back to the beginning. What was your, your inspiration to document this shooting? Well, Catherine, 30 years ago, this community was just shattered by the unthinkable. There really wasn't even a term for it yet, active shooter. I was a reporter on the scene here that night. And in making a documentary, we decided uh, to return to 18 people with direct connections to the tragedy. And all of them, including the jury foreman who spoke to us extensively for the first time, felt that it was simply a matter of having to face the fact that in his words, we are in a worse place three decades later. Just 30 finish. years ago, on December 7, 1993, a Brooklyn resident boarded the 533 train from Penn Station. Colin Ferguson opened fire on innocent commuters, killing six and injuring 19 of them. I saw someone get up and take the gun and start shooting everyone from right to left, and it was chaos. Law enforcement, the public, and journalists rushed to the Marillon Avenue station where the train stopped after three passengers tackled the gunmen. We came upon a scene of carnage. And it was horrible. It was a massacre. It's the first time in my career that I actually smelled blood. The person who committed this crime is an animal who turned that Long Island Railroad car into a death chamber. He is a fellow by the name of Colin Ferguson. Ferguson then had the audacity to claim he had fallen asleep and someone else was the shooter. And in his trial, he cross-examined his own victims. Is it your testimony under Mr. Peck's questioning that you saw no one shot? I saw you shooting everyone on the train, okay? Watching the absurdity, jury foreman Delton Dove. It was cruel cruel and hurtful for the witnesses to look you dead in the face at the person that shot you. So that was really torment. What took the jury 10 hours to find Ferguson guilty after he was identified by a parade of his victims? We weren't looking at the clock. Basically, we, a man's life was in our hands making a decision whether he should get life or he should be free. And we wanted to make sure that all the victims got their justice. 30 years later, Dove is disillusioned. We're at a worse place with guns. People with mental illness, uh, getting a hold of guns. There's a lot of anger in the United States and people are taking their frustrations out on innocent people. Delton Dove and the others raised some of the most challenging questions of our time. How do we recognize red flags before these massacres take place? And how do we stop the onslaught of violence that has just gotten worse since December 7th, 1993? Catherine? Carolyn, how did the survivors feel about the gun laws? And has anything changed in the 30 years? Well, many of them feel a lot of frustration and disappointment, but not universally. Uh, one of them, uh, notably Frank Barker, was shot five times. He was the father of seven. He's now the grandfather of 19 children. He feels that the problem is not uh, the nation's gun laws. In his opinion, it's mental health that hasn't been properly addressed in 30 years. And the, the failure to come together to address why we have so much violence in our nation. So, uh, you know, everybody in the documentary speaks out about the fact that it is just time to face uh, how 
we have not come far enough to address uh, violence in society. And Carolyn, just final question. You were at the original shooting. You've now had a chance to speak to the survivors, and you've done this great in-depth project. What has stayed with you? Well, I, I think that, you know, a, a massacre, a mass shooting reverberates forever. There are victims, survivors who will just never get over this. But there was also some really life-affirming moments in talking to these 18 people. Uh, Lisa Combati, for instance, was pregnant, eight months pregnant when she was shot on that rail, Long Island Railroad car. And now 30 years later, that baby that she was carrying is getting married. We went wedding dress shopping with them. Uh, so there really are some life-affirming moments, um, but for the most part, Everybody who participated wanted to make sure that the victims are not forgotten, that their names just don't blur together in just a repetition of tragedy with massacre after massacre after massacre. It was important for them to speak out to that these victims be remembered and that uh, the nation looks at how much time has passed and how little has been accomplished. Carolyn Gussoff, thank you so much for your original reporting. Thank you.